Hedge funds have this mystique of being magic investment vehicles, and there have been some very good hedge fund managers over the course of history that have put up some outstanding performance over long periods of time. People thought that hedge funds were employing these magical strategies and didn't think they could possibly be captured in an ETF. ETFs have evolved over time. Strategies that primarily had been the domain of exclusively hedge funds are now being offered in the ETF wrapper. So hedge funds have typically been the domain of the ultra-wealthy investors who have tried to get access to some of the best and brightest minds through these private vehicles. An investor will typically need to have at least a million dollars in net assets and over $200,000 in annual income for three years to be able to access hedge funds and be able to invest in them. The first hedge funds were invented not for the outsized return, but really as the word hedge implies to help limit some of the losses. So that's really one of the tremendous benefits of hedge funds is their ability to dampen volatility and to provide some cushion when the market starts to go down. We think hedging should be available to everyone. But because of the way that many hedge funds have typically done it, that's really been reserved for the high net worth investors. Recent changes into ETFs have actually allowed ETFs to employ some of those same type of techniques that had been reserved for hedge funds. So a couple of examples of that would be the merger arbitrage ETF, which employs a merger arbitrage strategy inside of an ETF. Merger arbitrage is a strategy that's been around for a long period of time and has been traditionally associated with being delivered in a hedge fund vehicle. It involves trying to invest in companies that have been announced as being the targets where somebody's trying to buy that company. So effectively what you're doing is you're going long the target company and shorting the acquiring company to try to lock in that spread premium. Another example would be QAI, which is the IQ Hedge Multi-Strategy ETF, and that tries to capture the risk and return diversification properties of hedge funds inside of an ETF wrapper. Another example would be the Goldman Sachs ETF, and they do it a little bit differently. They go and look at the actual holdings of the hedge funds themselves and try and buy those same names, and they buy those into the ETF. So costs are a very important component of any investment strategy because they basically are a drag on performance. Hedge funds have typically charged 2% of assets under management and 20% of the profits in any given year, which could be a fairly large chunk. Hedge fund ETFs, they may be more in the 50 to 70 or 75 basis points. So one of the critiques of hedge funds has been, they've been great for the hedge fund managers, but maybe not so good for the actual investors. ETFs and hedge funds are actually fairly similar in size now, both in the three to three and a half trillion dollars worth of assets under management. We think that we're going to continue to see ETFs grow, and we think over the next 10 years, that's a trend that's likely to continue and probably accelerate. Mm -hmm.